I'm going to go ahead and get us started. And um, then Tristan's going to do most of the presentation. And then um, I'll share an example again, and then we'll have a discussion like we usually do with our last 15 minutes. So um, this is third in a four part series. This one is keeping track of your accomplishments. So let's go to the next slide. So why is it important? And most of the presentation is on strategies and tools and then we'll have some discussion. So the idea here is to help you document your accomplishments completely and efficiently to help with reviews and promotion. And I'll ask also just add maybe to feel a sense of like, not just running through each day doing things, but feeling like you actually accomplished something and have taking up using this as an opportunity to take a moment and just look and go, wow, look at all the, the things that I did this year or this month or whatever, because we do spend a lot of time running around being busy and not really thinking about maybe the, the things that we've accomplished or the people we've impacted, et cetera. So this is important because it does facilitate documentation needed for promotion. So whether you're a faculty or a staff member, um, there is an annual review process. So it helps to have everything together so that you can easily pull it when you when you need it and um, to, to fill out your, you know, your review. And also it helps to have things just kind of in order whenever you might need it for like your resume resume or your CV or other support or things like that, that are automatically available. So I know for me as a researcher, it was kind of, it's kind of like, you know, I often have to have a, a bio sketch or a, you know, something ready. And if I can just kind of keep it updated regularly, then it, it goes a lot easier than, oh my gosh, what were all the things that I did that I need to figure out? And then to help you prioritize and make progress towards outstanding goals. So, you know, if, if you can see how you're accomplishing whatever, um, it, it aligns with goal setting. So if you have goals to accomplish certain things and then you can see how you did accomplish those things with your actual documentation efforts, then that's really helpful. Next slide. So we're gonna spend most of the time with strategies and tools and Tristan's gonna talk a lot about this. Um, but one of the main vehicles for the faculty is PRISM. So I'm looking to see, there are some folks in here who are faculty, but some who are not. So there's two separate processes for the annual reviews um, for, uh, for faculty versus um, staff or PRA level. So one of the first things that we recommend, and Tristan and I got together to talk about this, we both do this, is that whenever something happens, so we keep our CV or our resume, whenever something happens that's documentable, we put it in there. It doesn't have to look pretty or whatever, but say you publish something or you're even working on something, you put it in there right away. Or maybe you, you know, won an award or some, something, you know, happened. You put it in there, just keep it as a Word document, and then you can just copy and paste and put stuff in there. Because for faculty with the PRISM system, so that's the system for completing everything for your annual review, it's not open all year round. So you can't just go in there and put stuff in. Deanna might you might want to correct me, but I don't know how to get into it right now. Like you just, this is mine. So you can see that it's like my 2020 review was signed and completed, um, but I can't go into 2021 yet and do anything with it. So you need a place to put your stuff somewhere else. So recommend update your CV and also have a place to just kind of put things and catalog them like your teaching evaluations. So they're all in just one place. The other thing I want to mention about PRISM, it is really useful each year for you to put everything in that you're doing. And okay, so you're saying it's only open November through March. Yeah, so it's not open. I would love it if it was open year round. Then I would just put things in there as they happened myself. That would be my recommendation to the PRISM, the PRISM guy who control the prism. But, um, but anyway, since you can't do that, it's good to keep it, 
keep it somewhere else. But the other thing I want to point out here is, so this is mine. There's portfolios in PRISM and teaching evaluations. So you can um, upload your teaching evaluations and um, where well, you can access old ones, but keep your teaching evaluation somewhere. But the thing that's really great about PRISM is, is it built for promotion. So if each year you put everything in there, it saves it. And then you can go through and click on these buttons about narrative preparation and matrix builder, and it helps you build your dossier for promotion. So it's really, really cool. And then when you actually go up for promotion, you've got everything together, like of what you've done. So if you put the stuff you need in every year, then you're all set with having it. Um, and, uh, you know, when you when you're ready for going to that promotion process. So that's kind of for faculty. Uh, Tristan, do you want to talk about for uh, the other system? Yes, definitely. So I, I won't talk about a specific system for staff because I think that PRAs are a little different from other folks and I don't know that we have a dedicated system like PRISM, but I'll just share a few more approaches to tracking your accomplishments, things that you complete throughout the year, throw a lot at you. I wanna make sure that we have time for discussion at the end, but as we talk about these things, you can kind of think about what might work best for your processes and, and that sort of thing. So some folks just use their Outlook calendar and they add accomplishments or and completed goals, either as all day events or set up a specific category of tasks in the to-do bar that then you can review later, pull up a report and go, what are all the things that I got done in this category? I feel like Deanna has, I feel like that's where I got this idea. I think Deanna has mentioned this before that that's what she does. So she, uh, she might be able to provide some insight on that. So you can also create an online portfolio or a professional website where you list things as they're completed. I don't know that a lot of folks in our department do this or, um, here at Andrews, I'm not sure. I know that a lot of the professors that I've worked with and had tend to tend to put things up there about like their syllabi and then their their publications and things like that. They have more of an online CV where they list those things. Another tool that I really like, and this is specific to journal related accomplishments like publications, being a reviewer for different journals, trying to get a sense of how many folks have cited your various articles. Uh, it's a website called Publons, and I have some screenshots up here. You can see Google and Google Scholar does some of these things as well. I don't think it's quite as fancy where it, it generates these charts and things like that, but it Publons makes it really easy. So they have this connection. They have a connection or an agreement with a lot of the journals out there, and more often than not, the journals that we tend to publish in here in Family Medicine have connections with Publons. And so you set up an account there, you kind of mention, you know, you can put in journal articles that maybe you've already published in the past. And then as you complete a, as you submit a review to a journal, say you're reviewing for a particular journal, you'll get an email later from Publons. This is, hey, it looks like you did this review. Do you want to connect it to your account? Similarly, if you publish a journal article, Publons will email you and say, hey, it looks like another journal article came out with your name. Do you want to connect it to your account? And then they give you all of these, I don't know if you see my mouse, but they give you all these metrics over the years of how many articles you've published, how many times they've been cited, how many reviews you've completed for different journals throughout the years. And so, you know, I can look at this and go, okay, well, 2019 was pretty good for me in terms of publishing articles, in terms of having things cited, maybe not such a great year in terms of, you know, service completing reviews. And so that kind of gave me a little bit of a kick for 2020 to go, uh, maybe start accepting a little more of these invitations that come your way for reviewing. So I really like that one. I like anything that's automated. And maybe and once we get to the discussion, folks can share if Google Scholar does anything similar. I don't tend to use it as much. Let's see. So here's, again, I'm just going to throw a bunch of things at you because I want to make sure we have time for discussion, but a few more of the more manual options. I've heard that some folks create or keep just a handwritten journal, an electronic journal. Some people like that physical act of writing it down and having it all one place that you can go to. Other people make voice recordings that they can review later. You can use a handful of recorder or there is a built-in voice recorder on uh, Microsoft apps. I'm sure Mac has something similar. Another thing you can do, I've noticed some of my other kind of like, um, uh, other classmates and things like that will use LinkedIn a lot more often than I tend to, which is never. But for some people that makes, it feels a little bit more motivating to, if you're being more public with your accomplishments. You're saying, okay, I did this training. I 
achieved this goal at work, things like that, that can be a little bit more motivating to go, oh, let me document that and show everybody what I've done. Uh, again, more manual options. Take screenshots of certificates you receive, emails you get that are talking about things you've completed, or just any other documents. You can put them in one dedicated folder. Kind of similar to that, some people just keep a spreadsheet in Excel or Google Drive, which is nice because then you can access it whether you're at your work computer or somewhere else or on your phone and just list everything there. Uh, just in a minute, Jody will show an example of that for uh, how she tracks her publications. Let's see, another, finally, another software option that you can use um, are Evernote and OneNote, which are, I haven't used Evernote in a long time. It might come with some software packages, but OneNote we definitely have as part of our University Microsoft subscription. And that allows you to keep any type of media, oh yeah, there's my screenshot. That allows you to keep any type of media in these specific folders that you designate. And so if you look at this example I have here, I have folders for all these different projects or papers or committees that I've been working on over the past years. And you can be pretty flexible with how things show up here. So I have on one side, I just have meeting notes. On another side, I've pasted in some data that a team member sent me where we've been trying, you know, we were discussing how are we gonna present this in a publication. And then you have these tabs at the top, which are sort of like notebook tabs that you're just creating whatever you want those to be called. So I have them organized by project. You could also just have one dedicated tab or folder that is your accomplishments. And so then you could use this so you can keep all sorts of different types of media, any spreadsheets you put together, screenshots uh, or voice recordings that we've talked about in previous slides. You can put them all in that one place and you're not digging through a bunch of different separate documents in a folder. Let's see, I'm gonna hand it back over to Jody real quick. Let me stop my share and she's gonna show you guys how she tracks her publications using spreadsheets. All right, so this is pretty basic because I'm kind of old school. I just like Excel. So um, essentially what I did is create, you know, an Excel document. And this is just for publications because it was getting a little crazy how many were going on and who I was, what I was in charge of. So I'd say you can set up a similar system for yourself and make the tabs differently. But you'll notice down here, I've got published and in press. So this is for 2021. There were two papers published. So those, but if, if they're, you know, in press, then I can keep track of them right here. And so you'll see um, a couple that just came out. Then I've got a tab which is pending or r and r which is revise and resubmit. So um, you'll notice that some of these I haven't done a really good job of putting the complete cit citation in, but these are all the papers that are under review right now. And like this one here, uh, they had a, there was a revise and resubmit, so I did that. And then I have it documented that I, re, you know, I submitted the revision. So then I've got a status tab, but you know, there's, there's quite a few, um, when you add up all these tabs, so if you have a lot of publications, this might be useful for you. Um, then there's an in progress tab. So these are ones that are just kind of being worked on. And these are the ones that I'm leading. So they're, they're not done, they're not submitted yet, but I'm working on them right now. Then there's an in progress contributor. And so there's kind of a long list. Some of them, I don't even have all the titles, but they are being actively worked on right now. So you can put in, you know, where the date is, what the target journal is, if you know, et cetera. And some of them, you know, again, need more information, but there's a long list here. And then there's the to be started. This is, there's a longer list than what I have here, but this is kind of my um, keeping track of what, you know, what other ideas of papers I'd like to write for the future, but I haven't started on or have kind of been discussed. So this is pretty easy for me. And then I try to go in like once a month and update it so that I can, um, see where I'm doing, and then I'm kind of keeping up with all of the, the publications. Great, thanks Judy. So now we'll just have some open discussion. You can put your answers in the chat or probably speak up with them. We don't have a whole ton of folks here today, but which of these options that we've talked about have you tried? You know, Are there any that you find more useful than others or some that you're kind of like, yeah, that's not very effective. I don't find myself actually going back and using that. Uh, we'd love to know which of these you've tried and you know how useful they are. So feel free to throw those in the chat. 
speak up, anything. So I use the, I use my calendar to keep track of like how many interviews I've done or how many interviews I've set up or how many um, orientations we've done or whatever. So I, I use that for stats. Um, HCM is not super helpful with tracking statistics. Um, so that's, I have to do it myself. So I would use an extra. What's, what's HCM? What's that? What is HCM? HCM is the HR system. And so like oh, okay. in previous companies, I um, used it to track some of that stuff, but the one that we, the system that we have here does not. So if you have things that are calendar based, what I'm hearing from you, Deanna, like, like I, I do that for say the number of consults I do for the DNI program. What I, I try to set up the meeting myself and I put consult and I have a color. And then at the end of the year, um, or whenever they want to report, I can pull from my calendar number of consults, you know, like how many I did. And then I can see who they were with because they're all tagged consult. So that's kind of great for that. Yeah. I'm sure I don't use my Outlook as efficiently as I should, but I do use my task list and, and I use the calendar function. All right. So if they're in the calendar, do you just go back and count them or is it more you can run a report sure for your tasks? Way, I'm sure there's a way to run a report, but I know I just go back and count them. I don't know that there is. So I, yeah, that, I was just curious how, <laughs> if you knew more than I did. Uh, and your comment about um, prison being painful this year. So um, that's what I thought when I started here. It was like, oh my gosh, I was not planning for this thing. And what do I put in there? And how much do I put in here? And um, so I realized that I needed some other kind of support, you know, system. And probably the best system is the one that you will use, you know, and um, for faculty, for faculty, you know what they're going to ask you, you know, they're going to ask you um, and, um, you know, they're going to ask about like number of publications, you know, and how many were first author, you know, so, you know, you need to keep track of that somewhere, you know. Um, so like I use two different things like the CV, once it's published, it goes in the CV and then I can pull from that to write that into PRISM. But all of the different things that are going on with the number of publications in their different state of being, <laughs> you know, that I need something else to help me keep track because the CV is not going to work very well. So um, I, th I like that OneNote thing, Tristan, that you're um, that you're mentioning. Um, that might be kind of interesting to look into. Do you think that that would work for some research stuff or? For sure, it's just getting into the habit of doing it. So for a while when I was using it really heavily, I made sure I just had it open during the day. I had it open during meetings. And so that's where everything is at. I'm not going, where are those notes from that one, from that one meeting we're talking about? I didn't mean to stop sharing. I don't know what happened there. Um, and I know some of my classmates have used it for a lot of like research development ideas, things like that. It's really flexible. It's just a matter of figuring out how do I make sure I'm using this and updating it regularly? And how do I set up sort of a format and system that works for me? So I'll repeat that again, that really the best system is the one that you're gonna use. Um, and I was just kind of thinking about, we're you know, doing this study on like weight management and all that. And it's like, oh, well, my fitness pal looks, works great when I actually use it. You know, it's the same kind of thing. You know, like I really get good results and weight loss when I actually follow the plan and track it, you know? And so it's the same kind of thing. You know, what is it? I wouldn't be embarrassed about using something really, really low tech if that works for you. You don't know, you have to do something complicated. The idea is that the technology should help you. Um, you know, make it easier, not more difficult. So what other strategies and tools have you used? Any, anything else? What did we miss? <laughs> what do, what do um, you actually use? Because I see other than Anne, um, Anne's the only faculty member on this, so of the rest of you, how do you prepare so you're ready for your annual review? How do you keep track of what you have? Do you just kind of scurry? 
before you fill it out or what do you do? This is Angie Lanigan, and I actually work for the AAFP NRN, and Elizabeth Staten was really kind to invite me to this session. I'm not sure if our annual review is the same as yours, but I have a like an inbox folder that says like annual review. So if it's something that I think I would want to report in the annual review, I put the email in that folder. Um, it's not always super helpful because I don't always remember to do it, but that's one strategy I do um, for trying to track things that happen over the year. And then I also, instead of a Excel sheet, I use a running Word document, but I actually think an Excel sheet would be easier for tracking like publications or presentations that I was involved in. So I'm thinking about switching over. Thanks for the suggestion. I had forgotten about folders in Outlook because I always just end up searching for when I'm trying to find something. And so I like that idea. And I wonder too, if you can put calendar events into a folder, I'm not sure, but um, thanks for sharing that. Anything else that we missed or do folks just kind of wait till review time comes around and try to remember, which is mostly what I do outside of things that I managed to add to my CV. Yeah, I don't, I, sh I think I should keep track during the year instead of waiting until January 5th to like go back through and try to scrounge it all up at once. Cause I'm sure I forget things. As I was thinking about this, I was wondering if I should just make myself a calendar appointment like every two months or something is just like a check in on these things and then you can go back and track everything that you know you want to track for um, your annual performance review. It's a good idea. More of an incremental approach than just let me try to remember everything from the past year that has fallen out of my brain. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming up on uh, a point where I have to like report CEUs mm. for the past like three years. So I'm scrambling a little bit and I wish I would have done it on a more incremental basis. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a whole other really good area is like if you have any kind of certification that you need to have continuing education for. Um, Cause I know like, but you know, I have a health educator certification and I have to get like 10 more credits before the end of this month. So I'm pretty motivated. I got to figure that out real soon. Um, but yeah, you know, that's the other thing is keep track. My organization keeps track for me. Like as long as I send it in, as soon as I get the, you know, the credit, um, I can go online and find it. So all right, well, I'm going to move on to the next, the final question. Oh, and I didn't update the question numbers on these. Sorry, this is question three. So what would help support you to better, better track and document professional accomplishments? So thinking about how DFM or your team members can help support you in trying to keep these things, or how we can support each other on teams. Hey, Ann, I'm going to pick on you just for a second because you said you <laughs> pain prison was a little painful. Like, was there something that you think would have helped make it less painful? Like, no. I had done X, something like that? I mean, I ended up going back through my calendar and looking for all the different um, times I had presented, like, research results. And it was mostly that that category and the teaching and teaching. So I just didn't track those over the course of the year. I don't know why, but that was really the painful part. And then um, I did talk with Natalie and um, she helped me start something that automatically puts your publications in there. And I don't even remember what it's called, but so there were just some things I learned this year that I didn't do in the past. So you think you'll do them this year? Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to um, at least track those presentation dates and topics so that I don't have to do that and go through my outlet calendar in retrospect again next year. And that'll be good too, Anne, for your um, promote for, for your promotion dossier because you have to list all of the things that you've done in there. Right, right, and that was part of it too. Is our conversation 
Jody, about how some of those count as education. I realized I really did need to track them all since I don't like teach a class or anything like that. So um, yeah, I plan to do it differently um, starting today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's nice about PRISM is if you do put it in each year, you can go back and review every year and it builds it all for you. So it makes it a lot easier when you do go up for promotion. So, well, I see Anawara has a comment, meeting with your mentor or supervisor quarterly instead of waiting for the end of the year annual review meeting. So that sounds like a good opportunity to maybe if you are meeting quarterly with your mentor or supervisor, then to maybe at that point, update whatever system you're using to put it in there. And then you'll have it already for the end of the year, if that's kind of your way of remembering to do it. Which makes sense if you're supposed to report on your accomplishments, you know, with that conversation. Should we have a little motivational talk about like putting things in? Because I think that's probably the issue. I mean, it is good to have a good system. The issue is the motivation to put it in there so that you have it. And then it makes it easier when it is um, time to report. But like I said at the beginning, we're almost out of time. I, I like the idea, like I like my little publication tracking system because the more that move over to the tab of published, the more I feel like I actually did something, you know, it, it got out there, it, it got, you know, accomplished, um, whatever I learned from that study or whatever uh, got out into the world, you know, and um, you can do that with any other kinds of accomplishments, but it, it just helps to take some time to stop and go, wow, like, I did that. That is really cool, you know, or I was part of that, or I helped with that. And um, I think we all need more of that because it's just kind of challenging uh, always, but especially right now. Deanna? And I, well, I think that sometimes we don't like to toot our own horns. And so we try to be all humble about it and stuff, but like, especially for the faculty, I mean, you got to get promoted. So you got to do it, you know? But let us toot, let us toot uh, your horn for you. <laughs> well, you know, and even for the staff, I mean, you know, you the more that your supervisor knows what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, the more likely they are to help you advance or get, you know, get promoted or, you know, whatever, so. All right, well, are we, are we done? We've reached our half an hour point, thank you for participating. There's one more session left in two weeks that Elizabeth is gonna um, share some efficiency tools. Anything else, Great. Tristan? I don't have anything to add. If you want a recording or uh, if someone reaches out to you for a recording, we can um, just contact Elizabeth and she's, she's keeping those. So thanks everyone for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.